There is another controversy brewing tonight. This one involves the Bush administration and the news media. It is the talk of Washington these days. It involves a man who was a regular in the White House press briefing room. He was free to ask President Bush and his press secretary questions on a regular basis, but it turns out he wasn't really a journalist and wasn't using his real name. And there is more to his past that is making a lot of people wonder what he was doing in the White House in the first place. Here now, is a, a Republican hack using a pseudonym to obtain a day pass to the White House press room. It's not a particularly interesting story. Unless the gentleman in question also owns several gay porn sites, <laughs> including HotMilitarySpud.com, where his naked profile indicates he is, quote, five foot nine, 200 pounds, brown, high and tight haircut, green eyes, and eight plus inches cut. Like I said, there's a lot of things being said about me out there. A the lot of line is, we had a hooker in the White House talking to the president two weeks ago, and if that president's name was Bill Clinton, it would be people like John and others who rightfully would say, what's this guy doing there? Uh, Senate uh, Democratic leaders have painted a very bleak picture of uh, the U.S. economy. Uh, how are you going to work? You said you're going to reach out to these people. How are you going to work with people who seem to have... Uh, divorce themselves from reality. <laughs> a lot of people saw that question and asked, who is this muckraking Jeff Gannon holding the president's feet to the fire so he can more easily give him a reach around? <laughs> well, <laughs> is that, uh, well, it's, it's really becoming a, uh, an incredible story as we go day by day, and it's, it's particularly outrageous in that the Bush administration has the worst record in working with the press of any administration in recent time. Bush has had the fewest press conferences of any president. Uh, we've now had the revelations about uh, uh, payments to journalists. So on the one hand, you have you know no access or bought access. On the other hand, you have someone uh, planted there or at least uh, being allowed to be there, ask questions. The amazing thing is that Guckert attended a presidential press conference in last April. month when Armstrong Williams admitted getting paid to promote administration programs. President Bush said it was wrong. Our agenda ought to be able to stand on its own two feet. I'm confident you'll be, uh, over the course of the next four years, willing to give our different policies an objective look. Won't you? Yes, I can see that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Senate uh, Democratic leaders have painted a very bleak picture of uh, the U.S. economy. Uh... Yes, that was Jeff Guckert, who President Bush called on right after the president talked about objectivity. Never mind the irony, though. Everybody in Washington knows that reporters who ask tough questions of this administration are often punished, and those who tee up the White House talking points are rewarded. The question is, with Jeff Guckert, did the reward go too far? here isn't whether he's a hooker or not a hooker. The issue is the larger question of this is a man who, while he is apparently still running an escort service, has access to the White House, access to the President, access to apparently classified information regarding the Valerie Plame case, the CIA agent that was outed, right. and the media, other than you and the Washington Post, are treating this the same way the White House is, as though, oh, that's just somebody's sex life. It doesn't matter that yeah. apparently they're a hooker working out of the White House. Well, I'm going to give Keith Oberman credit, because uh, he, he on he MSNBC, Keith's been, Keith's been covering this story. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, because let's, let's talk security risk. This is something that really bothered me. I want people at home to think about this. Republican, Democrat, who cares? We've got someone getting a pass every day for two years into the White House press pool who apparently has interesting ties. He's, his paper is getting paid for by a big Republican contributor in Texas, I understand. Mm -hmm. He's got all this male new escort stuff going on. He's got the memo, the CIA memo, that he questions Ambassador Wilson about. So somebody gave him access to the memo. Does nobody seem to recognize the, oh. the kind of security problem we're talking about? It was revealed that Guckert attended his first White House press briefing no later than February 2003. Talon News would not be launched until late the following month. Our number five story on the countdown, it was a bad enough thing that somebody let in a guy with no media experience, an alias, and a background as an online escort. But why did they let him in if he wasn't even pretending to represent a news organization of any kind? 
This is videotape of Guckert at the White House press briefing of February 28, 2003, so long ago that Ari Fleischer was still President Bush's press secretary. So unlikely that, as first reported today on the website Salon, Guckert, under his pseudonym Gannon, boasted online about having asked Fleischer a question. And in the context of the time, that question bordered on the unbelievable. Guckert's presence in the White House briefing room before the creation of his pseudo-news organization changes the dynamic of the controversy from mere concern over the nature of his questions and the legitimacy of his credentials. Somebody admitted him to the White House as a reporter named Jeff Gannon. Even though he wasn't Jeff Gannon, he wasn't a reporter, and he wasn't representing any media outlet. Now, I don't want to start rumors here, but isn't it sort of obvious that he had a boyfriend in the White House? Please. Go ahead, Jeff. Jeff, go ahead. Go ahead, Jeff. For nearly two years. And no one had any idea who this guy was. Forget anybody, everything else. Assume he went in there and he was a saint. How could that be? We should know that. There should be. The Judiciary Committee of the United States Senate should be investigating it. The House Judiciary Committee should be investigating it, and if it were the other party in charge, it would be investigated. Sounds like you've got your... CNN! Me, a CNN... A CNN media analyst revealed how CNN broke the breaking of the story. Well, we found it. Or actually, one of the web, the bloggers that found it, uh, we found it through the blog. Uh, America blog. Dot com, which is a, uh, a liberal site found it. Now, we would show you that, but the pictures on that site are actually kind of racy, so we didn't want to go there. That's CNN reporting on why blogs are way more interesting than CNN. <laughs> House Press Secretary Scott McClellan says simply, in this day and age when you have a changing media, it's not an easy issue to decide or try to pick and choose who is a journalist. But there's a bizarre turn, with liberal bloggers discovering that Guckert was affiliated with several gay websites and even appearing to pose for a male escort service. All this raising questions. With Guckert's background, why did the White House grant him a daily pass? And how could he have been allowed to get so close to the president? How did he get a Secret Service press pass I, with an alias? I, I mean, I, I think... I mean, really, I cannot figure it out. Well, what do you think of my suggestion? I mean, well, I, I'm saying one. once he got into the White House, fine, someone was leaking him stories. But let's, I'm asking how he gets through the FBI clearance and the Secret Service. How does that happen? Well, I think there was a mole in the White House, or maybe a gerbil would be a mole. <laughs> All right, I, I apologize for that. Let's see, Saul, I thank you for joining us.